Hey everybody, welcome back to video video. So Terra Connecting Series, is that an analog in your pocket? Are you just happy to see me? And today we're going over the PC Engine CD setup guide. Now I put this one off for a very long time, seeing if the core was going to update, because while it does work and it is impressive when it's working, there are a lot of caveats that you need to understand to get the best performance out of the PC Engine core. But you guys kept asking for me to do it, so I figured it's high time we talk about the other end of the PC Engine. Because on analog pocket, can you think of any other core that uses compact discs for the games. I cannot. There's no Sega CD. There's no Neo Geo CD. It is all cartridge based for the most part. And that's the difference between the PC Engine and the PC Engine CD is the compact disc as well as the system cards that expand the capabilities as far as memory are concerned for the PC Engine. Because if you've never played Rondo of Blood or if you want to play it on the go on FPGA, there's no better way to do it than on Analog Pocket. But there is a lot of setup involved. This is one of the more intense tutorials, so I want you guys to make sure. Don't skip ahead. Don't not pay attention. I want you to succeed on this one. And if you follow the steps I'm going to lay out for you in this video, you'll 100% be able to play these games. But the first thing we need to talk about is where to put the game files in and of themselves. We're going to go under Assets and be careful here. There's two PC Engine folders, PCE and PCE CD. It should be obvious which one is which. PCE is going to be for Hue cards, but I do see people rush a little bit and they pick the first option they see. We need to be under PCE CD. Once you double click into that, you'll know you're in the right spot. You'll see PC Engine CD. This is the core file. Back up one from there and under common, you'll know you're in the right spot if you see all of the different system cards. BIOS 1.0 all the way to 3.0. Now, if you take a look at the games we have here, and these are all ones from my personal collection, if you go into a folder, you need to make sure that they are in bin queue format. That is what the core is going to accept. And there is a caveat on this as well. 27 bins is the maximum that the core will understand. If you have a game with more than 27 bins, you're going to have to go ahead and find merged bin ROMs for your pocket. It's just a limitation of the current core and it has not been updated since then. Just go ahead and copy over your games in a folder. That way they're organized correctly. And I'm going to put in Panic Bomber here, which is over 27 bins. So you can see the error message we're going to get when we actually try to run that game. It's just the fact that this core is not completed yet. There are some asterisks as far as how it operates. But getting the games in the correct folder is only half the step. You now have to open up Pocket Updater and you're going to select option 5, Generate Instance JSON Files, or maybe it's JSON, I just call them JSON. It'll give you an error message for any game that had more than 27 bins, and it's going to say that games over 27 bins are not currently supported, used a merged bin file for this game. If you see that error message, you know the game's not going to work. And you do need to generate these instance files. If you do not, the Pocket will not see the games we just installed and you will not be able to run them whatsoever. Now to get into the core, it's the exact same procedure but to change games is going to be very different and I will go over that later in the video. If you find yourself failing to change games, we'll explain why. Under console, you'll see PC Engine CD, and as long as you generated those instance files and you hit run here, you're going to see the five games that are under 27 bins ready to run. All you do is select them like you would any other game on your analog pocket. And if you've never used the PC Engine CD before, it doesn't boot directly into the game. It's going to boot into the system menu where you have to hit run, and you're going to see by default, it's going to use the Super CD-ROM system version 3.0. If you run Pocket Updater, all of those correct files will be on there in advance for you. Now you'll see here we are in Rondo of Blood, the cutscene is playing, we are getting audio and voiceover, but off the default the audio on this core is not correct, it is broken up and it is not running at the proper speed. But as far as the visuals are concerned, as far as the performance of the core is concerned, you're getting an accurate representation of what a PC Engine CD would be. I have both a Duo R as well as the briefcase unit, as well as Mr. FPGA, and I'm very familiar with Rondo of Blood. But the audio is the biggest problem, and there is a solution. What I'm going to let you do is listen to the audio and how corrupted it is, and I'm going to adjust it in real time while you listen so you can understand where you need to be approximately to get good audio. So listen and pay attention right now.
So in real time there you could hear me adjust the audio timing because by default the audio timing that the core will open up with if you've never adjusted it is going to give you warbling broken audio off the Redbook side on the PC Engine CD. That is not my final setting recommendation. I'm going to go over one more adjustment and let you listen to what I think is the closest approximation of PC Engine audio on the CD side possible. But now that we've done that, we are getting very, very close to a perfect experience. There's only a couple more settings I do want to articulate, and I'll do those after we get past the audio portion. But as far as the performance on this, once you get the audio slightly dialed in, you're playing Rondo of Blood, and it's acting exactly as you would expect it to if you were sitting in front of real hardware, which I have more than enough of, probably too much if I'm being honest with you. And as far as how the game plays, how it looks, how it controls, this is an excellent experience whether you're docked like I am now for capture or if you're on the go it's just that audio thing a lot of people think that the core is broken when they first open it up hopefully in a future update that that audio timing default does change but what I found was if you actually go into audio timing and you envelop the entirety of the letter D to get to around 927,712 it sounds near to perfect in my ear so go ahead and listen to good audio and I'll be right back with more settings I played Rondo of Blood a lot and that sounds good to my ears. The only other suggestion I have outside of some other things we're going to go over in just a moment is I like it when you turn the raw RGB color on. You'll see that health bar at the top left gets much more vibrant. This is what I like the PC engine to look like, but that is subjective. You can leave it on, you can leave it off, you can do whatever you want to do with it. It is totally up to you, but I do like the raw RGB values. Now when you want to change a game, you think you would go into a load CD ISO, select the new game, and something would happen. And I had other people independently test this just to make sure I wasn't missing anything. That does nothing. You would think if you reset the core and then went back to the menu and hit run that that would be how you change a game. Unfortunately, all that's going to do is reset the core and load up the game you chose from the consoles menu under the open FPGA settings. The only way I've been able to actually change a game in the PC Engine CD core is completely quitting out to the main menu and then starting the core again, which honestly only takes like three or four more seconds. It's not that big of a deal, but if you're finding that you can't change the game, that is why just quit and go right back in and you'll get to the system menu as well. Now I do want to tell you something about the Super CD-ROM system cards. We're on version 3.0 and that's what you normally want to be on. And in this instance you want to be on it as well, but it's telling you you need a 3.0 card. You're thinking to yourself, well that's what I actually have. Some games do have some region locking, it is very rare, but if you see a warning about not having a 3.0 region card, you can just hit that system region icon to make sure it is on, and then if you go back in and hit run again after you reset the core, you're going to see that we're going to boot into the game with no issues whatsoever. There's also going to be an arcade card selection that will allow for the arcade card for any of the games that use it. I leave that on by default, but I believe there's one game in the entirety of the PC Engine CD collection that will throw an error when that is selected. But you'll see here we're into the game, everything looks good, and as we get into the actual gameplay, it is again spectacular. It looks good, it sounds great, it controls well. But just remember that for like 98% of the games, you're not going to have to worry about the region whatsoever. But certain titles are going to throw an error telling you you don't have a 3.0 system card when you know in fact that's what you're running. Just switch the region from there. But something like Star Proteer here is just such a pretty game. And you'll see if I go in and I turn off that raw RGB color, that red is going to get more into the slightly tomatoey pinky territory. If I go back in and turn Rob back on, you're going to see in just a moment it's going to get much more red. The PC Engine to me has always had very vibrant colors, so my recommendation is to use the raw RGB values. But again, you can decide whatever you want. As we turn it back on, you're going to see just how much brighter that red gets. It's almost like a neon red and that just 100% works for me. Now based upon the graphics of the PC Engine and used to being able to play it on a CRT back in the day, 
I think this is one of the cores that actually benefits in certain games by using some of the display mode filters. If we go to CRT Trinitron and we go over into mode settings and make the image slightly bigger, you're going to see what this waterfall looks like after we do that. It's just one of those things, you have so many different filters, but I think CRT Trinitron with scan lines and hard edges is what's going to work the best for PC Engine and PC Engine CD. We go to Integer Plus and now you'll see that we do have those scan lines and a little bit of that shadow mask on top of the waterfall which I do think gives this game a little bit more even of a look totally subjective a lot of times I don't play with filters but at least on some of the PC engine games I do think they actually look better but if we move over to something like Bonk 3 I actually prefer them to be off it's gonna be again just like the raw RGB values a totally subjective thing but that's the great thing about FPGA you get to decide what works for you on a game by game basis but once you get everything dialed in, the performance on this core has been solid. I haven't been able to freeze it, I haven't been able to lock it, I haven't found any games that won't run so long as they're underneath that 27 bin file limit. And again, you can use merge ROMs to get past that, but hopefully in the future the limitation on the pocket side does get lifted because it seems like that might be something to do with the actual analog OS and a restriction on the hardware that could be potentially removed in the future. And if this core does update, I will definitely update the setup guide to let you know what's going on. But honestly, once you get everything dialed in, it looks great, it plays great, and it sounds great. One more sound sample of the audio at the place that I think it needs to be, and I'll be right back. Now that sounds good to my ear, but honestly, I'm not 100% super familiar with the Gate of Thunder soundtrack. It's been a couple years since I played that game, and with the audio timing, that's what you're going to find. Every once in a while, you're going to have to slightly adjust it if you know something is off. It's about as best as the core can do right now, and again, it's not like the Pocket is known for having a lot of CD-based systems on its architecture. The fact that this works in the first place is great. It hasn't been updated for a while and the reason I put this setup guide off for so long is I was hoping and thinking maybe it would update soon, but that isn't the case. A lot of you have been asking me how to get this working on your pockets, so I figured now is as good a time as any. Just remember that if something doesn't sound good, look good, or doesn't work, I've explained why in this video. This core does come with some slight limitations, but if you pay attention to the tutorial and set everything up, you too will be playing PC Engine CD games on your analog pocket. And there's an absolutely vast library of games, some of the best games of all time in my opinion. I'm sure the first thing most of you are going to go towards is Rondo of Blood, and that makes total sense, but do Google some of the best games of all time. And if you want to see a little video on my favorite PC Engine CD games to play on Analog Pocket, leave me a comment down below. But yeah, if you follow all of the steps in this tutorial, you put your games in the right place, you generate those instance files, and you dial in your timing and colors, you should be having a great time. Sure that, well done, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.